tell one of these kids to stop completely the social media and stop completely <laughs> this. Shut yeah. down the, the, the laptop and the tablet and the phone because you cannot power your asset. Yeah. So, so we are talking about electricity demand is, is booming. It's a skyrocketing. 33, 32% of the power produced last year was coal. 23% was oil, liquid oil. So we're already talking about 55% coal yeah. and oil, so the most polluting and the most emitting uh, parts, and 26% was gas. Hello, I'm Simit Burz. Welcome to the Net Hero podcast. This podcast is for you if you're interested in business and reducing our carbon footprint. Our belief is that better business leads to a better planet. Who wouldn't want to make things that have less impact on our society. It's a podcast for people who are inventors, academics, people working in the energy sector or from any different field that believe that they can do something better to make the products and services we use every day less harmful. Now, we've been running for about three years and it's been very successful with about 36,000 downloads and plenty more massive engagement. But this show now needs a sponsor. We've done it editorially for all these years, but we need your help. So we know you've got a loyal audience out there. If you'd like to get involved and sponsor the show, then email me on the email just below on your screen. And we'd like to see if you're the right fit for us and that you've got the same vision we have. Now, on to this week's episode. Let's clean up the planet. That's what this podcast is all about. And one of the things that people say is, let's just forget everything. We've got to get away from fossil fuels. We've got to electrify. A lot of people believe electrification is only one thing, renewable power. And it's all about renewable energy. Now, I've always believed you need a mix. And a lot of people shoot me down for it. And frankly, I don't give a damn. I think we need to have nuclear. We need renewables. We also need clean fossil fuels because without them right now, the plug would be pulled on this broadcast. So what are we doing about cleaning up the fossil fuels that we use right now? Some would say companies shouldn't be doing that at all. They should be looking at alternative technologies. Others say you've got to be realistic. It's still probably two thirds of the energy the globe uses. So that's what we're going to investigate today in the Net Hero podcast. And I'm delighted to say I'll be talking to Javier Kada from Mitsubishi Power. Javier, hello. Or should I say, hello. buenos dias. Buenos dias, buongiorno. Buongiorno. <laughs> You've got all the languages I like to hear. That. That's great. Um, Javier, just a bef before we go into what I think is a very important topic, a little bit, people have heard of Mitsubishi, but most of us will probably think it's a car or they might have seen a digger. What is your division? What do you do? What, what does Mitsubishi Power do? Oh, thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Summit. It's a pleasure to be with you. So uh, thank you. Hi to everybody who is uh, attending. But uh, we are the energy division of the Mitsubishi Group, of Mitsubishi Heavy Industries Group. So we are probably one close to 130 years of history. So we have been uh, creating energy solutions across the whole planet. So I have to say we are today the number one global market sharing technologies for power generation uh, that in the past took us to deliver or develop the first solar panels last century and to develop the first wind turbines. And once we, the market started to happen, we moved into gas turbines and, and, and batteries. And we have been everywhere and we continue being everywhere. So we are the energy brand of the Mitsubishi Group and, and we are definitely ready for the challenge, uh, also the challenge of this talk today. So the people would, would see, they wouldn't really see your stuff. It's the thing that makes a turbine work that delivers our energy or it's mm -hmm. sitting in a box in a battery. That's what it is, yeah? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we are super big uh, technology brand, technology <clears throat> company. Yeah. We are, I, I would say, in every country of the planet, 190 plus countries uh, having uh, installed base. And we have a very close relationship with our customers. But our customers are big utilities, big, big power ones. companies. Uh, big, I mean, we, we we are making sure the lights are on in in a way, and that we in a way the, in today's world we are backing up wind, solar, and making sure that the electricity is stable and and also is affordable. So you're from Spain, obviously, and. You'd think Spain. Why, why obviously? Why obviously? Hey, obviously. <laughs> uh, actually, you could have been from another part of uh, uh, South America, but I'm going to go for Spain, and I know you are. So, you know, you're from Spain. My family's from India. Two hot countries. 
And yes, there's solar, <clears throat> but there's been a lot, particularly in India, of coal for years. People look at places like um, China and they see this duality of it developing so much renewable and yet still burning coal. America, America's got to into energy security through fracking and it's now doing lots in, with, you know, renewable energy. <clears throat> Many would say that all these things show that actually <clears throat> there is a, a mixed bag. But I said at the beginning, there's a narrative that the only way to get to net zero is clean, renewable power. Before we discuss what you're doing around fossil fuels, how do you answer that when someone say, you know what, Javier, you shouldn't be doing any of this stuff. You should just be concentrating on the future, and that is renewable energy. I tell you that we definitely are doing that. So we are a technology company. I'm a mechanical engineer. Uh, clean energy, clean energy doesn't mean only one type of energy. So, I mean, we have different uh, sources of electricity. And I want to highlight that uh, out of the greenhouse gas emissions globally, two thirds, so more than 65%, two thirds come from power generation, come from electricity generation. And the, the fact or the news is that this is not going to get smaller. I mean, as we get more electrification, more EVs, uh, more AI, more data centers, this is only growing. So, and, and that's why we have a huge, huge challenge and a huge responsibility and a, and a huge mission in, in our hands. So, so, but I mentioned we have 190 plus countries in the planet. Yep. There's probably more than 100 different grids, very different approaches. You mentioned China, you mentioned US. Well, you took the two largest economies of, of the planet, but you could go to other places like Norway, where every, every electricity is already 100% zero carbon due to hydropower. There are places, you said, India, Spain, with a lot of solar, a lot of wind, a lot of storage with water too. But we already have more than 10 20 years of, of installing solar, installing wind, we already know very well the challenges that this brings is the intermittency, is the seasonality, is the match of the demand with the, with the production. So some key facts that I want to highlight. So globally, from the power produced last year, and I go to 2023, it's too early for closing 2024, one third, so 30 Two, a bit more than 32, almost 33 percent of the global power came from coal fire power plants. So 33 percent. So, and you would say, well, that should be Indonesia, China, Southeast Asia. Well, I tell you, in Germany, which is the largest yeah. economy of the euro, is, is more than 40 percent. So it's much higher number. And Eastern Europe is, is similar. Of course, we know the reasons, geopolitical reasons, and also the nuclear uh, phase down of the last year. So. One of, the, one of the two words I want to put is ambition and pragmatism. So we need to have a very high ambition exactly. to, to achieve the decarbonization, but we need to be pragmatic because if we think that we can clean everything immediately and build new stuff, well, it's, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen time-wise. It's not going to happen financially-wise, and it's not going to happen technically-wise. So that's why we are at Mitsubishi, our key pillar or, of, or our key roadmap is, is decarbonizing the existing infrastructure. So it's taking what is existing today yeah. and with the lowest cost in the shortest time possible to decarbonize. And that's, we would come to, to I said that 33, 32% of the power produced last year was coal, 23% was oil, liquid oil. So we're already talking about 55% coal yeah. and oil, so the most polluting and the most emitting uh, parts, and 26% was gas. So we can see that gas should be one of the tricks to reduce emissions, because when, when we replace oil or coal with gas, we are reducing more than 50%, sometimes 60%, sometimes 70% the emissions of that plant. So going from 100% to 40%, to 30%, I want to highlight that. That is what is called a transition. And of course, build as many renewables as we can, as much solar and wind as we can. But remembering always that every solar power needs backup. Every yes. wind power yes. needs backup. <laughs> solar, solar in London is going to work only for seven hours every day, as Correct. we may all know. Correct. Well, if we're lucky. I mean, a day like today, we'll get about Not today, half an hour. today, it's four. <laughs> Um, you make a really good case, and I agree with you, but how do you respond 
to people who just say that is not the way because there's a very vociferous voice out there I think <clears throat> in my view a slightly deluded voice because it just believes you can do it and and they don't want people looking at trying to decarbonize they just want it all closed down that's very difficult for anyone to you know who's in the industry I can get it when you know you talk to young kids I'm sure if you've got kids or you talk to young people they're like stop it stop it now stop the oil stop the gas stop all fossil fuels that's a brave ambition and it's a really good thing that the young kids want that but the practicality and the financials of it it's impossible isn't it yeah this is not I think you I fully agree but not only the financials I mean the way of life yeah. So, yeah. I mean, tell, tell one of these kids to stop completely the social media and stop completely <laughs> this. Shut yeah. down the, the, the laptop and the tablet and the phone because you cannot power your assets. Yeah. So, so we're talking about electricity demand is, is booming. It's a skyrocketing. And because globally the way, as well. Yeah, yeah. Globally, the yeah. way we live is more mm -hmm. power dense than ever. So as sending an email, sending a WhatsApp, posting something on Instagram is costing... Uh, greenhouse emissions. I mean, it's because you need to store that data. I like to use uh, the data centers. So data centers is a sector that is is in in explosion, in, in explosion in amount of building and an amount of uh, construction. So a data center has several chips, the chips that are the storing the, the information, etc. So those chips, when you are in the morning and you wake up and you put your toaster and you toast the bread, I like the bread quite toasted. <laughs> uh, the, the temperature of the bread is much colder than the temperature of the chip. Of course. So you need, you need electricity to keep the chip uh, working, but you need the energy to cool down that chip. So, so the amount of power that all our way of living is uh, is needing to be sustainable and to be working is humongous. So what we are, companies like us, uh, like Mitsubishi, last year we committed globally to triple, multiply by three, the amount of renewable power, the amount of clean power, yeah. triple. I want to help. This is a huge, huge challenge. Triple from now until 2030, so the coming five years. And I tell you, the good news is that we are going to make it as humankind, as a human race. But again, I highlighted 32% coal, 20% oil, 25% gas, so 4% nuclear. So at the end, in wind and solar, plus hydro, 14%, but only wind and solar, we're talking about 8 to 10% of the global electricity of last year. So, so if, we, if we triple, when we triple, in the best case, we're going to be above 20, so you would say by three is 24, but but of course, as you know, unfortunately, wind power is producing always at the same moment, so sometimes you need to curtail it and waste it. Solar power is producing in the middle of the day, not when the consumption is the highest. So so still, that is not going to be enough. So still, we need we need to replace coal, and we need to replace oil, and we need to do that with gas, yeah, and that gas agree. needs to be. A, step by step being mm. replaced by low carbon or zero carbon molecules like ammonia, like hydrogen, and that's what we are working. This is not a job of one year or not a job of two years. It's the whole oil and gas industry. I know the young generation, we're still very young, uh, Summit. So, but <laughs> that's very young. Young. Hey, Listen, you're yeah. very young. I'm not. I'm, yeah, I'm, no, no, I'm as old as the well. fossil fuels. But no, I, just, no, no, I, no, I no. didn't want to stop you one second. This is the Please. thing, right? So, no one thinks about the energy of this, right? If I say to someone, what is dirty? The obvious thing, and it makes sense, is people see a car, right? And they see the fumes coming out of a car's yes, exhaust yes. or a bus, or they see a power station. And people think, well, this doesn't produce any of that. And you've just nailed it. That, you know, when they're sending all their messages on, you know, Insta or whatever it is, no one's thinking about the energy that is going into that. That disconnect, do you think, is that is that causing a slight problem? Because everyone um, wants to have cleaner air. And of course, you can say, get rid of dirty petrol for cars and diesel and power stations from coal. But then no one thinks that this is using energy. I mean, we need a huge amount of energy for everything we do. But you you highlighted the telephone. The, yeah. the, well, the telephone. We call it telephone, but it's not a telephone. The terminal. It's, not, it's, a, it's a computer, for, isn't it? For, absolute, for absolutely everything. And we're going to the queue in London and you, everybody's on the, on the phone doing a lot of stuff. Well, uh, sorry, bad news. I mean, a diesel car or even a pickup in Texas 
is polluting less per day than one of these machines. There not, you go. not polluting, it's simply the energy demanded. And the, and again, why is it polluting? Because I'm plugging it into the grid, but where is the electricity from the grid coming from? Well, remember, one third is coming from coal, 25% is coming from oil, and that is the footprint you are leaving every time you're posting something, every time you are just sharing it's, stuff. It's a brilliant and, thing. And, <laughs> no, and please don't stop doing it. We, no, I, I, this, I think this, you've, you've really summed it up in a brilliant way because I think that's the disconnect people don't see. You can protest, but you've got to get it. Let's move on because I want to talk about what you're actually doing. Now, we talked earlier before we, we came on camera about the three areas. So let's talk about that. And let's talk about three parts of the world. Let's talk about a big coal country like China, it's of India, Australia, even Germany, right? What are you doing to try and clean up coal? And then let's talk about what's happening with, with gas and let's talk about kind of the, the cleanup of using um, batteries and stuff like that. So right now, I've got a coal plant. I need it because my people need energy. But I do want to clean it. I don't think there's any person on planet Earth that likes breathing in this crap. And there's no government that wants this for their people. So what can you do to try and clean up a big coal plant, say, either in Germany or in one of the sort of uh, provinces of China? Yeah, I mean, there is, you need to do a transition. You need to do a transition of fuel. I mean, UK is a good example. UK is one of the few, uh, and is probably the first high developed yeah. country, developed largest economy, who has totally faced out the coal in this year. Uh, so well done. Well done for the nation and well done for the society. So I, I want to put uh, one level. These are the emissions of a coal fire power plant. And when you transform it into a gas fire, natural gas fire power plant, your emissions are one third of it. That so is two called thirds a transition. Gone. Two thirds clean. Two, two thirds are gone. That's a transition. That's yeah. a transition. That if we do that, I tell you, we fix, uh, well, we're fixing 33%. Or we are fixing two thirds of 33%. So we're moving forward. That 33 would be like an 11 if if I would make the match correct. But, um, but, but how could the people say the coal plants, you know, we had it here with Drax, which turned into biomass eventually, but it's very expensive to change them. Turbines, gas turbines are very expensive to build. How can you make it affordable? Because people say, well, hang on a second, the cost of the in investment. I'd rather stick with my coal. Some governments are yeah. saying. Yeah, I mean that's that's where it comes the the regulation part. It comes the regulation part that uh, if if frankly if we look only at financials, uh, the reality is that we probably would just stick to course, coal the whole course. planet. So yeah. coal is probably some places we would still burn wood and and we would still burn whatever we can and, and London would be full of uh, smoke. coal yeah. Yeah. smoke and like it was uh, 100 years ago. So that's uh, probably the, the situation. That's why we do need regulation to protect people because right. we're talking about health, we're talking about education, but we're talking about the future of society. So we are all very aware that there's a climate uh, crisis and that we we need to stop uh, we need to stop dumping uh, hazardous emissions to the atmosphere in, in a massive way so yes it's required an investment i tell you that the great news is that you don't need only to bring uh, a new power plant you also can bring solar wind which are extremely right. low cost and then with the gas, what you are doing is backing up so that you have the 24-7. So we're not talking about gas power plants that are going to be replacing the full coal, but the coal you are going to be replaced. One third of it, you are going to be replacing it with, with uh, renewable power, so with wind and solar. And you might have also some batteries for frequency regulation, for smoothening the, the peaks, because uh, something we feel in, in the UK, uh, wind power is very yeah, spiky. It's yeah. very spiky. It's coming, so you need to smoothen it down. And and the gas fire, the gas fire, what is doing is is backing it up and giving, making it become base load. And then when we have reduced, as you can imagine, we take the whole coal fire. You take one third become renewable, so you only have two thirds. Then two thirds of the two thirds you are taking it out, so of the emission. So you are you are moving from a level of emissions to a various uh, much, much more uh, sustainable level of emissions. That is the journey in which we are in, embarked now in 2020s, 2030s. And at the end of that journey, we will have approximately a bit more than 10% of the emissions we have today. 
and that we will need to find more uh, drastic solutions like uh, sequestrating carbon, uh, yeah. storing carbon, etc. In areas like uh, cement manufacture, steel manufacture, as they call heart of it, really, you cannot replace because there are thermal processes, etc. But when people say we need to move to clean power, absolutely correct. But clean power is not only solar and and, and wind. I mean, you need a storage, a storage of all kinds, a storage with lithium ion, a storage with water, a storage with molecules like natural gas, like hydrogen. At the end, a natural gas that is replacing coal is two thirds less emissions. But the natural gas that is backing up solar and wind is not only two, removing two thirds of the emissions, that last one third is only operating half of the time because you are normally backing up, uh, supporting wind and solar. So, have you got an example so, of where you've done this? Have it, you've gone yeah. and done that mix of change the coal to part gas, part battery, parts solar? Have you done a, a plant? Multiple, mu multiple, multiple places. Tell me multiple. about one. Tell me one. For, for, fortunately, fortunately. I mean, I, I mean, we have one of our landmarks is in it's in the states in 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 Utah. I mean, mm. it's it's probably the largest the largest uh, unit globally in which we are uh, we have the largest storage of energy uh, using hydrogen. So we have solar power. Solar power is feeding the grid, but of course, many times the grid is not needing that power in the moment it is generated. So then that solar power is uh, producing hydrogen with electrolysis that we are installing, uh, and and that hydrogen is powering a gas turbine that the gas turbine is using right. gas but but is all the hydrogen that is available is blended with the gas so you are reducing further the emissions of the gas and the hydrogen that is not required in the gas turbine is being stored under the ground so that you have the full circle you have the renewable power then you have the gas as the backup and then you have the storage of hydrogen to reduce and eliminate the emissions of the gas too so at the end uh, uh, and it's, of course, operating in Utah, but uh, serving California, Nevada. I mean, it's a, it's a is, it, is it now zero coal or is it still got a little bit of coal? I mean, no, no, it's zero. Coal, is, coal is out. Coal Gone. is out. I mean, fr frankly, I mean, very, 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 very radical here. I mean, when you bring gas and renewables, coal is goodbye. Sayonara. I mean, it's, Sayonara. It's like, adios. Uh, to coal. Adios. Adios. Hydrogen. We had a great podcast the other week talking about this. I'm a big believer in hydrogen. The big issue is, obviously, people say it comes from, generally, the easiest way to make it is from hydrocarbons, from the fossil fuel industry. Wow. There's a big energy cost in making it. People are looking at new technologies and looking at the idea of kind of how we get more of the, the, the green rather than the grey and the blue hydrogen. Yeah. Where do you see the whole issue of hydrogen as your company tries to do this slow de-escalation of emissions across yes, yes. different plants? Thank you, Samit. Uh, great news here is that you are talking to Mitsubishi. We are a company that is over 50, not, not you and me, but over 50, 60 years working with hydrogen. Uh, because hydrogen has been a very important molecule in aerospace, in yeah. steel manufacturing, and, and these are divisions that we do have. And, and so we, we have uh, the technologies and we're developing new technologies for producing hydrogen from clean sources or from, from renewable power, so to make green hydrogen. Here, I see a lot of similarities to what happened 20 years ago with Solar Power Summit. So, so in 2004, 20 years ago, solar power was too expensive, a bit nuts. It was R&D driven, university money, because it was too expensive. I tell you, by 2008, the cost reduced 96%. So it was from 100 to 4. Uh, what, what did happen? Magic. No, it was economies of scale. It was manufacturing at a scale. It you was do you think that will happen with hydrogen as well? Yeah, it is happening. We can see that it is happening. It will not be. It will not be so so massive, but it will be similar to the batteries, to the battery manufacturer. At the end, an electrolyzer is a is a piece of equipment that we, we have our own uh, knowledge and, and we're developing multiple solutions in that sense. Is uh, the the bigger the scale of production and the bigger the size of the units, the lower is the cost per kilowatt hour of production. So we see that is already happening. And uh, the same that uh, some people 
could say that solar is never going to make it happen in, in, in 20 years ago. And, and five years later, it was the cheapest source of electricity, not the most uh, stable, but the cheapest by far, and sure. it continues being. Hydrogen is appearing as a new class of renewable energy. It's a storage of clean energy in a molecule that can be blended with uh, gas, that can replace gas, has high energy density. And again, good news, there are companies who have a lot of experience like us, in how to store it, how to use it, how to produce electricity out of hydrogen. Carbon capture. I'm a big believer in it. I really think it is part of what we need because I go back to what we've been discussing through this whole podcast is that there's a reality and ambition is great and you should have the ambition, but there's a reality. And vast majority of our fuel is still, as you said, fossil-based. If we can capture that carbon, I've always thought this, gosh, we could make the fuel cleaner and then actually it doesn't really matter what you're using as such where are you sitting as an organization looking into that because some people say again it is too expensive the technology isn't as great you have to either sequester it or what the hell do you do with the carbon that's and once you've caught it so what are you doing as, as an organization yeah. when it comes to that thank you thank you we as mitsubishi as mhi mitsubishi heavy industries I can, I can tell that we have a carbon capture solution. We are the number one market share globally player in carbon capture solutions. But is when I mention about the roadmap of our strategy, the first step is to decarbonize what's existing. The second is to, to create a hydrogen economy and electrify as much as we can. The third pillar or the third step is, is to create a carbon value chain. So store and, and capture the carbon of those processes where the previous solutions cannot be applied. For instance, steel manufacture, aluminium yep. production, yep. semen semen manufacture. I mean, I, I give you an allegory, a comparison. It's like a car. Like, let's take a, I would take a British one, a Range Rover. Let's take a Range Rover, a, a gasoline one. You make it diesel. Then, then, of course, you could go to the pipe and store the, the emissions and capture them and, and store them somewhere else. But you could also electrify the car. I mean, if you electrify the car, you don't need to, to, to store the... So electrifying the car is simpler and easier than just but keeping still comes the combustion. With a big environmental yes. cost, the batteries. Ab ab abso yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But it's all, it's all relative. I mean, at, yeah. the end, at the end, in a steel foundry or, a steel, or aluminum smelter, if you would be able to run it with wind, solar and some batteries... Uh, well, I tell you, you cannot because you need to reach 1,800 degrees and it's extremely uh, energy intensive. Then, then you would simplify the whole thing. But there are areas, there are sectors where carbon capture is going to be the ultimate uh, tool, the ultimate way of fixing completely. Carbon capture fixes the whole thing, but of course, it's more expensive than, than changing from coal to gas, gas plus renewables, renewables plus energy storage. So, and, and that's Having there is not one solution for everything. No, That's the beautiful it. thing, and you need to have different levels of intervention and and again the affordability and the fairness of the solution. So it's uh, you need to the electricity needs to reach everybody at a sustainable cost. Also. You've got some carbon capture plants. Is that correct? You've already got carbon capture yes, running. Yes. What are you I doing? Mean, with, yes. What are you doing with that carbon? Are you storing it? I mean, the, it's I mean, this, th th thank you for the question. Well, well, the largest uh, the largest carbon capture plant in the planet is in the US. It's called Petronova. It's with uh, our Mitsubishi technology. Uh, there are multiple solutions to do with the carbon. Most of it is, is to store it and to see what to do with it later. Of course, we are looking with customers to use the carbon uh, for byproducts like right. tires right. and other uh, subproducts that need carbon too. Uh, but at the end, that is the third pillar I mentioned was the carbonized. Hydrogen and the last one was the carbon value chain. What to do with the carbon? We are working with people like Boeing, Airbus, to as Mitsubishi, as MHI, to, to produce the sustainable aviation fuels. So having high energy density mm -hmm. fuels that use carbon too, carbon and hydrogen. And so having the hydrogen solutions, the carbon solutions to create. So at the end, it's all part of the same decarbonization journey that, that will take decades. And uh, some solutions are happening now, some solutions are starting to happen, and some solutions will need some more years to start happening. But, uh, but the technical solutions are ready. That's, uh, that's the good news. No? To end with, um, 
you know, I've really enjoyed talking about the, the world. And that's the thing that we often, you get too much into kind of what's happening here in the UK. And, you know, and that's obviously it's the most important thing is, is where you are based. But globally, as you know, you sit there with a, a global company, you look across. Is there the enthusiasm that we see in Europe or the UK in places like India, Indonesia, I don't know, Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, doesn't matter where it is. Do, do you see it that people want to decarbonize the same? I mean, I mean the quick answer is a yes, a quick answer, but, but uh, of course with a but. I mean, the yes, but it's, there is a different roadmap, it's a different journey, it's a different journey. So you mentioned Africa, where we have a lot of operations, that there's many places that not everybody has access to electricity. So the first thing is to, to have access to electricity, to health, to education. And what and I tell you, the solution is not to start from scratch and build coal fire plants and then gas. No, no. The, the way is to go for renewable power and then having means of storing it. And, and of course, talking about very small grids because there is not a major grid. We talk from the luxury of UK, but of it has the, mo the most sophisticated grid in the planet. Could be in a, or more complicated too, but at the same time, very more capable too. I tell you, the UK has already phased out coal. It's really becoming what one prime minister said. It's becoming the Saudi Arabia of wind. I mean, Correct. A lot of yeah. wind power, and it's really happening. And and now in the gas, in the gas uh, power generation, we need to inject. We need to blend with hydrogen so that we start to decarbonize that, and we can be as clean as as the books could make you clean. I mean that. But about other countries, other countries have different journeys. Of course, and, they did. And, of course and, they did. and you need to make sure that the society is able to develop and able to reach the levels of quality of life that we do have in, in places like the UK and, and Europe. So that's why the enthusiasm is a different kind of enthusiasm. They, I mean, nobody wants to pollute and nobody, no. wants, to, nobody wants to breathe uh, CO2 in the air. That's because it's not it's not good for organic life. Uh, that's and that's why companies like Mitsubishi we are looking how to contribute to society with solutions that are clean, affordable, but but can be fair for for everybody depending on where is each one being born. I think you're a pragmatic person. Do you think we'll hit the 2050 target? I don't know about the UK. Maybe we might. Maybe we're not. But you know, globally. Do you think we're going to have enough scope? Because next year is 25 years, not long, yeah, to get to that. I, how how I, do you feel it, yes, sitting where you are? Some people would say I'm optimistic, but I tell you that uh, 2050 is so, so far, uh, Summit. I believe that we as humankind, we are striving, and Mitsubishi is striving for 2040, net zero, for all, all our partners and supply and value chain, which is quite big. And I believe that we as humankind, we should target the 2040 and there will be countries, places that will not be doable. But yes, uh, we must uh, reach some years before 2050 that net zero in our operations, in our activities. And again, the challenge that is coming is that our needs of electricity and, and development are only growing. Also, the needs of cooling, that is to be cool is of nice, course. but in this wow. case... Uh, this yeah. case is something unprecedented in the history of this planet, uh, but yes, I'm confident. Javier, I have really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. I think you've given a very pragmatic and optimistic view of where we're going. So thanks for your time today. Thank you so much, Sammy. Take care. No, no, my pleasure. What do you think, audience? Let us know. Get in touch by email nethero at futurenetzero.com. Remember to watch this episode. You'll need to log on to Bright Talk uh, for the first week, and then it's available on YouTube and on your uh, normal podcast platform. We are very keen to hear your stories. We're very keen to talk about what's happening. So please get in touch and keep subscribing. Thanks for your time. You've just heard the Net Hero podcast from futurenetzero.com. Join us as we help you find ways to cut your carbon footprint as we head towards net zero. Subscribe and follow us on social media. FutureNetZero.com. Better business, better planet.